the thing about the, the, the college thing is you're not really giving people no real money. It's more so the parents just need expenses to get to the games. I mean, that's pretty much the thing is travel costs. Uh, Christian, I want to talk about your start because I think it's really interesting. Um, you've been a basketball head your whole life, and I do mean your whole life. Um, you pretty much, you started mentioning how you wanted to do sports and entertainment with like when you were young, and you started your own scouting service when you were 12 years old. Why were you so driven and determined to make basketball the centerpiece of whatever career you imagined for yourself? Um, I guess it wasn't that strategic when I was that young. Um, that was pretty much all that, that was going on in Saginaw. Like, it wasn't a whole lot of stuff happening. Um, and I went to – my dad was the coach at Saginaw High School, which is, like he said in the documentary, to us the best school there is. So um, I was always there. You know, he was the basketball coach, so he was always kind of around basketball. So it was kind of something that was naturally organic, just just – was in my life as it pertains to the scouting service um so so basically my dad had a great high school team um at the time there was I don't know if you know Vince Baldwin from Detroit and I do and Norm Oden who's also from Detroit they were they were like the guys Vince had Nike he was doing the scouting stuff and he had his own magazine and then Norm had a um a, a deal with rivals where he was like the editor of Michigan Preps. And they both are, for the people who don't know them, they're like legendary figures in the Michigan basketball space, basically. So they were busy people and they had these media or, or, or scouting projects and they needed somebody who could actually, you know, meet deadlines, get reports done, blah, blah, blah. They both had a... Um, deal one Vince was at Nike uh, Norm had his deal at Adidas so I'm 11 12 years old and they basically were like listen if you can get this stuff turned around and you can do it in a proper way we'll, we'll give you free shoes and sweatsuits and stuff that's how they paid me so in the beginning it, it was just I can get free clothes to go to school and free Jordans I'm wearing 11s every day like stuff was crazy and then um I realized like yo these like I can kind of just do my own thing once I started to build it up through them and I just, I know it sounds crazy saying you can do your own thing when you're 12 or whatever it was, but it was just like, I mean, it's, I can, I was on the computer and it was like, I can publish my own stuff. And I don't know, it was just the natural progression in my mind at that time. Like I, I started with somebody else and now it's the time to do my own thing. Now you, um, you were charging coaches $600, right? Yeah. To subscribe. Like, like how much money were you able to bring in with the scouting service? So that was that was that was a little bit later. The 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 in the original um I didn't start doing that till I was like sixteen, seven. Not not as not that that's like I'm fifty, but you're right. I it was, was like, like that's still pretty old. <laughs> yeah, I was I was sixteen and then at that moment I was transitioning to take over our um travel travel basketball program. Um and Essentially, the, all these coaches was recruiting the, 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 recruiting the kids that, that were coming through our program, basically. So if you think about it, you know, in Michigan, the whole Midwest and the, the Big East conferences, basically the whole eastern side of the country were subscribing at that point. Um, and, you know, 600, I don't, it was six figures for sure. I mean, I was driving a BMW my senior of high school, so I don't really you remember. You were driving a BMW? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um yeah my senior year or maybe I didn't get into after I was out of high school like the as soon as I graduated but I'm pretty sure I had it my senior year what so did your we parents were, think about all this though um they my dad's the one who told me where to, or I could buy it at I remember he, he was like yo there's a new there's a BMW going what's a good rate you know what I'm saying so I mean I think that they were proud of me I remember um right when I had a got out of high school, I had got like $20,000 for something. And I remember um, bringing my computer to their room and like, cause I was still living with them. And I had just showed them like, this is one, this is like one transaction basically. So um, I think that they thought I was a little bit crazy um, and wildly ambitious, but they never stopped me from dreaming. And that's something that people do do to their kids. Like you can't do this or you should be focusing on this because 
because it is like they never ever did that so that's something that i i do think did help me grow and and um i don't know i just it it, it i know how some people think that this is all crazy but for me it's it was all natural and i think that mindset came from them always you know supporting everything every crazy idea i had basically so even when um you know, once you got grown and you were starting your own company, uh, your parents, I mean, given the amount of money that you're, you know, you're willing to deal in and doing all this, were they ever, did they ever say to you, like, you ever think you might be going a little bit too fast? Like, were they, were they trying to get you to pump the brakes at all? Because everything seemed to be coming so fast for you. Um, my people, they didn't know everything that was happening. Um, no, it wasn't, it wasn't. It, would, it wouldn't have been that. It would have been more so just not you moving too fast. It was just more so just don't be dealing with people. That's how my, my dad ain't the type of person just to be talking to anybody. So that would have been um, something that he would have been shaky about. It's like it's too many people saying your name. And that is what, 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 what um, brought everything down. It was too many people who, who, who knew stuff that was happening. Um, so, so that would have been his thing. My mom would have been more so just just you know be careful and everything like that but they didn't know all the the details until after everything went down i mean honestly and i don't i don't i'm not trying to be funny saying this i didn't even really realize everything that was happening until it was over um because when you're in it and you're moving so quickly you ain't really thinking about um everything that's happening like it, there was somebody a player who is an nba now and we were very close, like family, and I didn't represent him because I um, didn't think that he was an NBA player. I wasn't certain, and I didn't want to take him on in our relationship get messed up because um, he doesn't make it, basically. So after the scheme, he calls me, and we had like a heart-to-heart, and he basically tells me of a conversation that we had, and he felt like I big-timed him. And I, I said to him, like, listen, bro, I understand what you're saying, but I don't even remember this conversation because I was involved with so much stuff that, that you know, you miss in little details or stuff is, stuff is not going over your head, but it's like, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's just basically like we was, we was just, in, I was just involved in too much stuff, basically. Like it was just a lot happening. And a lot of stuff that I was kind of, a lot of traffic that I was directing or moving and, and, and some stuff kind of got lost, got lost in translation, basically. Um, so, yeah. How many, if you could ballpark it, how much money over the years as you've done, as you have been associated with players in, in this type of business, how much money do you think you've given to players over the years? Um, so this is the thing about the college stuff, and this is what people got to understand. Mo- to answer your question, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't know the exact number. I thought you were going to say something higher than that, to be honest with you. Well, well it, it, it's, it's up there for sure. I mean, I, don't, I know that, that to the way your contract is structured, or the way my deal was structured with the company I was at, um, your salary and your expenses is essentially a draw against your um, your commissions that you bring in basically. So are you talking you, about when you were with Andy Miller? Yeah. Okay. So if you, mm-hmm. your salary and expenses are a million and you gross two million and your your percentage of the of your commission is let's say thirty percent, you would have gotten um three hundred grand as opposed to um six hundred grand or whatever the case may be. So so um you had like a, a draw against that. I know my my balance was in the seven figures when when at the end for sure between my salary and my expenses so i don't know the exact number of that that went to 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 recruiting but i it, i know it's six figures for sure um but but the thing about the, the the college thing is you're not really giving people no real money it's more so the parents just need expenses to get to the games i mean that's pretty much the thing is travel costs like if you look at the documentary we're talking about so-and-so's getting two grand a month and like they're paying to get to see their kid play ain't nobody getting rich like this wasn't a we're dropping four hundred thousand dollars on somebody this like, wasn't blue was, chips right <laughs> no like that 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 happens in football basketball isn't as you know you have a case like if it's somebody that's super 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 important 
you know, maybe like Brian Bowen got up to, to, to he, he was going to get up to six figures. Um, but, but like, you know, that was even going to be spread across the entire year. Like it wasn't at one time. So, so most of the, and Brian's dad, his house had burned down in Saginaw. Like it was a reason why he needed the money. It wasn't like, yo, I have to have this, um, no matter what. It was like, yo, my kid's coming down there. He's never been to, been away from us. We want to, we want to be around him. We want to go to the games to, to, to get a new place in Louisville and to travel is going to probably cost you a hundred grand. So that's what it was. It wasn't a, let's get rich off of this. Um, thing that's happening more, more of the the bigger bags and the bigger deals are made you know with agents with the dudes are already professionals when, when people are going to their contracts and and everything like that like it's real that's when it's real money